theory, if Eve knows that Alice and Bob are using a Caesar cipher, where Alice is just going to shift the alphabet by a certain amount, then it's a simple conceptual thing to decrypt the message. It involves some work, like Eve is going to have to write some things down. But the steps behind how you do it are relatively straightforward to understand. We start with the idea, we know how to decrypt a Caesar cipher if we know the key. So if you know the key, then you can just go back to the message and recreate the lookup table that was used to encrypt and then go the opposite way where you go from bottom to top instead of top to bottom. If you know how to de decrypt the message from one key, then you realize, well, there are only 25 keys and there's no way that there are 26 letters, but there's no way that you would use A as a key since if you send A to A, you haven't shifted the message at all. So when Bob gets the message, it takes him some amount of time. And in the worst case, it takes Eve 25 times as long as it takes Bob. So in the day when the Caesar cipher was sort of cutting egg to edge technology, this was good enough because it might take Bob, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes to decrypt a long message because you have to write down lots of stuff. But Bob could decrypt it in maybe an hour or 10 minutes or something. So let's say that Bob could decrypt it in an hour. That means that Eve might take up to a day. And that's a pretty significant difference. That's definitely enough difference that Eve can't use the information uh, much faster than Bob can. But on the other hand, nowadays, if Bob writes a computer program, he can probably do this, I mean, very, very fast, maybe 0 0.001 seconds. After he's written the program, the program can do it incredibly quickly. And so then Eve's program will take longer, but it will only take 25 times longer because essentially what Eve is doing is just running Bob's program 25 different times for 25 different possible keys. And so if our friend gets the information in a millisecond and we get the, our, our enemy gets the information in 25 milliseconds, that's not really any difference at all. So nowadays, the Caesar cipher is, is definitely not used to protect any important information. And this concept of thinking about how long it could take Bob versus how long it could take Eve is a really important idea that we're going to come back to. The, the big thing we hope for is that it takes Eve much longer than it takes Bob. And when Alice and Bob do this together, um, Eve, though, does not want to take 25 times as long. Eve is hoping for shortcuts so that it doesn't take the full 25 times as long. Now, the thing about shortcuts is sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do produce a faster result. But there are other times and other situations where they actually take longer. So the way that this method works is you choose a word in the ciphertext, and then for each letter in the word, write the letter immediately after it in the alphabet. So here I am trying to decrypt the ciphertext, N-L-A-T-V-U-L-F. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the N-L-A, and for each letter in N-L-A, I'm going to go forward one letter. And I go forward and I get O-M-B. And now I'm going to ask myself, do I think that this is likely to appear in the plain text? And I don't recognize this as a string of letters that typically occurs in English, especially as a word. So I'm going to, for now, rule it out. And then I try the same thing, but instead of shifting the ciphertext forward one letter, I shift my previous guess one letter. So after O comes P, after, after M comes N, and after B comes C, then I ask, do I think that's a word or something that would appear? And I say, no. QOD is next. And then I just keep repeating this until I get something that I think is part of the original message or could be part of the original message. I'm going through and I'm just doing this over and over again. And I'm asking, all right, do I think this counts? Shift it forward. Do I think it counts? And I've got 11 guesses here and I don't see anything. So I just keep going. Uh, sometimes you do have to do a lot of tedious work, especially with pencil and paper cryptography. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Finally, with um, 
my 15th guess, I get cap. So I've shifted these letters quite forward quite a bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guess and I'm going to build a lookup table and I'm going to see if it works. So I've built my lookup table and what I believe, the guess, the, the hypothesis that I'm using for this lookup table is that NLA was, would decrypt to CAP. So and what I'm actually thinking is that CAP in the original got transformed to NLP or NLA, sorry. What I think is that the P in the original message worked with the A, the C in the original message became N in the ciphertext, and the A in the original message became L in the ciphertext. So I have this hypothesis. Now I'm going to test the hypothesis by seeing if this is the right table, what would the rest of the message be? And so I'm actually going to write out the rest of the lookup table, and I can start anywhere as long as I just continue the alphabet from wherever I started. I don't have to start at this A. I could start at this N and then go O, P, Q, R, and continue. So when I do that, and I start writing it in, I end up with this as the lookup table. And after building this lookup table that's based on the guess that NLA is cap, then when I go to decrypt the TVULF, what I get is, so my T and my ciphertext should reverse engineer to my I and my plain text, and my V would reverse engineer to my K, and my U would reverse engineer to my J, and my U would reverse engineer, sorry, my L would reverse engineer to my A, and my F would reverse engineer to my U. And so this would be the result if cap were actually the first word of the plain text. And of course, this doesn't work. So unless this is some nonsense acronym or something that I don't know, I think I need to move on. I don't think that CAP is actually the right correspondence for NLA. Are you all with me? So I'm going to keep going. And as I keep doing this process forward, I eventually get to the word get. And get is another possibility because it actually is a word. And so I build my lookup table for get, and this one actually works. So the original, the original plain text was get money. But if you're actually doing this in Caesar's day or in a time before now, you'd actually have to sit down and write down all the letters and then do write down the lookup table. And if you hit a dead end, then you back up and start over or you continue the process from where you tried your last guess. There's a lot of guess and check. It can be very long.